Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another video lecture on discrete mathematics. Today's topic is asymptotic notations. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt. Let us start. First, the topics that we are going to cover in this video. First, we will have an understanding of what are asymptotic notations and what is growth of functions. Then we will cover different asymptotic notations starting from big O notation, then big omega notation, then big theta O notation, and then we will do some examples regarding these asymptotic notations, and finally we will conclude today's lecture. Let us start with a scenario. Let us talk of a company, a multinational company named ABC Company. The manager of the company has encountered a certain problem where he needs to find a solution for searching records of different employees. He assigns this job to two of his efficient programmers. One is Bisma and another Abdullah. Both the programmers work on the problem and they find a solution in the form of an algorithm. Bisma found a solution and called it a solution as B algorithm. B algo after her name Bisma and Abdullah named his algorithm as A algo meaning Abdullah's algorithm. Now manager has two solutions for the same problem. One provided by Bisma B algo and another by Abdullah A algo. and he needs to find out which algorithm is best for his company that is he needs to choose which of the two algorithms is providing him best solution now the question arises here we have to check which algorithm is best so we have to check it is efficiency and manager of the company need to know which algorithm is efficient so that he can implement it there are two parameters to check efficiency of an algorithm when it comes to the question of efficiency of an algorithm we check it and uh, again as to two parameters one is called time complexity which quantifies the amount of time taken by an algorithm to run as a function of length of the input. Time complexity simply means the time taken by the algorithm on a machine to solve a problem. Another parameter is called space complexity which quantifies the amount of space or memory taken by an algorithm to run as a function of the length of the input. Both these parameters check whether an algorithm is efficient or not. If an algorithm takes less space and less time, it is considered efficient. And if it takes more time and more space, then it is considered an inefficient algorithm. Space means the memory occupied by the program, that is the RAM. Now, if we check time and space complexity, these two complexities depend on a number of factors. And these factors are the processor that we are using to run these programs, the available hardware, the operating system on which the program has been installed or on which the program has been executed, the programming language in which the program 
uh, used to write the algorithm is written. So these are different parameters on which the time and space complexity will depend. But we know that processors change very often. Hardware also changes very frequently. Operating system, we may use any kind of operating system and we may implement the program in any programming language. So efficiency of an algorithm should not be judged based on these parameters because these parameters are uh, subject to change with the passage of time. So we do not consider these parameters. What we consider is the execution time of an algorithm. We are merely concerned about the execution time taken by the algorithm irrespective of the processor or the hardware or the operating system or the programming language in which the program has been written. So this execution time of an algorithm is measured in terms of instance size. So what is this instance size? It is the size of the representation of the input. So input means the instance size. Let us take some examples. For example, if we have a sorting algorithm that sorts the numbers and we provide this algorithm with five numbers. We provide the algorithm with input as five unsorted data numbers. The algorithm runs on this data and outputs a sorted data in the form of a result 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Here the input size is 5 because the size of the data is 5. Now, if we provide input size of 20 to the same algorithm, it will again sort the data. But this time it will take some more time because the size of the input has increased. Similarly, if we now increase the input size to any variable n, n on sorted data is provided to this algorithm. It will again sort the data, but this time again the time taken by this algorithm will be considerably more. So each time the data is provided to this algorithm, it processes that data, but depending upon the size of the data, that is called instance size or input size, the time of the execution changes. So here n represents the input size. And time taken for exec execution or time complexity will depend on instance size n. So we can say that an efficient algorithm is one which performs on larger values of n. So we evaluate that an algorithm will be considered efficient if it performs well on larger values of n. So now coming back to our company example, the manager has two solutions before him. One provided by Bisma and another by Abdullah. Both these algorithms solve his problem. But he need to find out which of the two solutions is best one. So for that, the manager asks both the programmers to come up with the algorithm complexity. The complexity of the algorithm. The programmers evaluate the algorithm and solve its time complexity and come up with these two numbers, these two functions. Bisma told that the time complexity of her algorithm is 100n plus 100, while n is the number of input size, that is the number of employee records that need to be sorted. And Abdullah calculated the time complexity of his A algo as P of N equal to N square. 
where n is the input size or in external size. So now manager again needs to check which of these two two algorithms is efficient. One with time complexity of 100 n plus n, 100 n plus 100, and another with n square. So he needs to check which of these two algorithms is efficient. So again the problem to find best solution. Now let us discuss and analyze these two algorithms and their complexities and check which of the two is efficient. So for that we need to answer some questions. First, which algorithm, algorithm is efficient? We need to check which of the two algorithms is efficient so that we can imp implement or the manager of the company can implement the efficient one, which takes less time and less uh, space. Another question is which algorithm has lower time complexity? Which of the two algorithms takes less execution time? And third question is which algorithm best performs on larger values of n? Since this is a multinational company and the size of employees is very large, so this sorting algorithm will be tested on very large data. So we need to check which of the two algorithms performs on very larger values of n. So let us compare these two algorithms and find out which of the two algorithms is efficient one. So in order to compare these two algorithms, we are making use of an Excel sheet. On the left hand side, we have B algo and on the right hand side, we have A algo. B algo given by Bisma and A algo given by Abdullah. First, we will provide some input size, that is the number of records, employee records that need to be searched or sorted, and then the complexity, which is the number of steps taken by B algo. And on the right, right hand side, we are having the same thing. So let us evaluate B algo for some input size. Suppose we have 10 employees then what will be the complexity of this algorithm? So the complexity is given by 100 into n plus 100. So we will write 100 into n, n is this value plus 100. So the value comes out as 1100, means B algo is taking 1100 steps on an input size of 10. Let us check the same for A algo. So time complexity is n square. So we will write n and square. So it comes out to be 100. So when the employee records are 10, the B algo takes 1100 steps and A algo takes 100, only 100 steps. So this algorithm seems very efficient. Now let us increase the input size to 20, then 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Let us check up to 100 employees. And same here, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So now let us drag this, it will give us the result of all these values and do the same for A algo. Now, if we compare these two data sets on the left hand side, on an input size of 10, it takes 1100 steps, but A algo takes just 100 steps. So this A algo is seems very efficient. On input size of 20, this algorithm takes 2100 steps, but A algo takes only 400 steps. Again, A algo is efficient. Going on this way up to 100 employee size, the B algo takes 10,100 steps, but A algo takes only 10,000 steps. Again, A algo seems efficient. So we can say that 
um, these results the algo is efficient so this was first step we have checked the complexity of these two algorithms for smaller values of n but as i told you we have to evaluate an algorithm for larger values of n when m is very large then we have to check which of the two algorithms performs best uh, or we can say which of the two algorithms takes lesser number of steps so moving ahead let us increase the input size from 100 to 110 and again here now let us compare when the input size is 110 b algo takes 11100 steps a algo takes 1201 steps and 1200 and 12100 steps so now the trend has changed up to this point up to this point a algo was efficient efficient so up to this point a algo was efficient but now the result has changed when the input size is 110 the time taken by b algo is less than the time taken by a algo let us now increase the input size to 120 130 140 150 160 170 180 190 or 200 let us copy the same in these cells and see the results now you can check from 110 onwards you can color it from 110 onwards the time taken by b algorithm is less than the time taken by a algorithm now let us compare for 120 it is 12100 but this one takes 14400 this takes for 130 13000 and 100 and this takes 16000 so now the trend has changed and for 200 it takes 20000 and 100 but b a, a algorithm takes 40000 which is twice the time of this algorithm so now what happened up to these smaller values of n a algorithm was were performing best but after this value 110 the trend has changed and now this a algo b algorithm has started functioning efficiently so that is why i told you that we do not consider the smaller smaller values for smaller values the result may be in favor of an inefficient inefficient algorithm but we have to check it for larger values so larger values determine which of the two algorithms is efficient so now we can say that from this data E algo is efficient. So from this data, we can say that now B algo is efficient in all these cases. So here, after the compare comparison, we came to the conclusion that for smaller values less than 100, the A algo performs best better than b algo but for larger values a b algorithm is efficient and very much performs over the a algorithm let us see this result now graphically now let us analyze the 
graphs are these two algorithm functions. The first algorithm given by Bisma B algo has complexity of 100 n plus 100. So let us plot it. So this is the graph of this function. Now let us draw the graph of uh, another algorithm that is A algo with complexity of x square. x square. So this is the graph of another function. Now these are the two graphs. Now let us put some labels and coloring to these graphs. We are done with the labeling. Now let us start analyzing these two graphs. This gray type graph is the graph for A algo complexity that is y equal to n square or A x square. And this one is for B algo with complexity 100 x plus 100. Now if we see that the graph of B algo is above the graph of A algo. That means this B algo will be having higher y value for a particular input size than the A algo. Let us see for this 40. Let us put draw a point. So this is the value 39.97. Let us make it 40 so this is 40 point something and it is having the y value of 1634 and let's put a point on at the same input value on the y axis on this function so let us make it 40. This also exactly 40. So let us see. A point represents a point on this graph, which is for A algo, and its value is 1634. This means is for an input size of 40, it will be taking 1634 steps. And for uh, for the same input size of 40, the point B represents steps taken by this algorithm that is b algo those are 4100 steps so definitely for an input size the graph which is this b algo graph takes more steps than the steps taken by this algorithm and this is the same result as we got in uh, the spreadsheet but we know that this is not going to happen forever there will be some point where this B algo will have lower complexity than the A algo. Or we can say that beyond that point, the complexity of B algo will be less than A algo. And that point is called break even point. So let us see that break even point. Moving graph further down. And here we find a point where the two graphs meet. So this means the complexity at this point for both the graphs will be equal. So let us see this point. What is this point? So this is the value 100.99 and when the input size is 100.99 the complexity of both the graphs is equal and this is the break-even point 
we can label it as break even point so this is the break even point where the complexity of two algorithms is equal but beyond that the complexity of we analyze that this a algograph is above b algograph this means the complexity of this algorithm will be more than the complexity of this algorithm so beyond that point if we go to any point we see that these two graphs divert and the complexity of this a algograph is more than the complexity of this b algograph so this is the point that we were looking for so what is the reason for the values beyond this break even point are lesser for this algorithm and more for this algorithm but beyond this point the scenario changes the reason is presence of this 100x plus 100 there are some constants associated with this function so if we see that the actual function should have been y equal to x that is a linear function but it is having some constant as 100 and on the right hand side plus 100 the reason why the complexity of this algorithm this function is more than the complexity of this x square function is these two constants 100 plus 100 and up to this point up to this break even point the effect of these two constants cause the complexity of this function to be more than the complexity of this y square fun x square function but after this break even point the effect of these two constants neutralize and we see the actual situation that the complexity or the steps taken by this function are more than the steps taken by this function so when we analyze different functions we have to look for these constants and we can see that for higher values of input the effect of these constants is neutralized and they have no role to play so small for smaller values these constants effect but beyond some point when the effect of these constants will neutralize the actual condition of the two functions will come before us so this represents one situation when we go for the asymptotic notation is we try to omit these constants and we try to analyze only the main parts of these functions that have impact on their outputs the main part is x square this square x square has an impact even though there are some constants associated with it if we write it as y equal to 100 x square that 100 will have impact to some point but beyond the break even point the effect of that constant will be neutralized same is the case with this this is a linear poly polynomial function and the linear polynomial function is having some constants it is of the form y equal to ax plus b where a and b are some constants associated with this linear function when the impact of these constants will be neutralized after break even point we see actually which of the two functions is performing better one more point that we need to consider while analyzing these functions is how these functions grow so what is the trend of growing of these functions we see that the first function which is a linear function it it grows linearly for a particular input it will give the equivalent output provided with some constant they will have a small impact on these on the value of this function but when we analyze this y equal to x square this function grows faster when we analyze this graph for the smaller values it it gives some smaller output that is the y value but as the input size increases the curve goes more stiffer and the output value increases with the increase in input size so if we go beyond this point it go, grows more stiffer so 
this is called growth of functions when we analyze growth of the functions we are concerned with how the output of this function will increase with the increasing input size whether that is increasing linearly that means that, that function will be having slower growth so as the input size increases the output will vary very uh, in vary in small values but if it is a square function a quadratic function as the input size increases the value of the output also increases so it grows much faster let us take another function a cubic function and let us see this function this is the cubic function and you can see that this function grows much faster than a linear function or an a quadratic function because for a particular input value it is giving much higher output value or we can say that for a particular input it is taking much more number of steps so we can label it as y equal to x cube so this is a cubic function similarly if we have a function of power 4 y equal to x raised power 4 so this function this green one this is y equal to x raised power 4 so this grows even much faster than a cubic function so it will have much more complexity than the uh, function a cubic function so we can label it this is x equal to y raised power 4 similarly if we have a polynomial of higher order that will have much more complexity than these functions so what is desirable is when we are searching for an, for an algorithm we want an algorithm for which the growth is slower means given a particular input the output of that function should not grow very rapidly so that is the case with this linear function so if we have a linear uh, complexity a function with linear complexity that is desirable then an algorithm with complexity of square or a quadratic uh, uh, equation and if we have two algorithms with a complexity of quadratic or cubic function then we will go for this quadratic function because it is having slower growth than a cubic function which grows much faster for uh, increase in input size similarly there are some other functions uh, for example y equal to 2 raised to power n this grows even much faster so if we go to some extreme points we see that it grows very fast so this is called growth of the functions so in algorithms when we analyze the growth of the functions we are concerned with how the growth of the function happens with the increase in input size an algorithm with lower growth is preferable than an algorithm with higher growth and we can write them here similarly we can write another function that is y equal to n factorial this is having even much higher growth it grows much faster if an algorithm is having this much complexity that will be infeasible for higher input values so this means no algorithm or no computer in the world will be able to uh, execute that program for higher values of n if the value of n is in millions so it will take billions of years to execute that program or code similarly there are some functions that are desirable even uh, better than this linear function for example a logarithmic function so if you see that this logarithmic function is having grows very slowly if we see it if we see it it gets merged with the input size 
it is growth is very slow and an algorithm with logarithmic growth is desirable than an algorithm with linear growth and an algorithm with linear growth or complexity is desirable than an algorithm with square or quadratic complexity and an algorithm with cubic complexity is desirable than an algorithm with a power of 4 and so on so we can write these uh, as so if we have a function with log of x it will have lesser complexity than a function with complexity of n which will have lesser complexity than a function with quadratic complexity which will have lesser com complexity than a function with power of 3 cubic similarly that will be desirable than a function with power of 2 raised power n and that will be desirable than a function with power of n factorial or n raised power n so these are called growth of functions and now hope you understand what is the growth of functions and what is the meaning of this growth of functions again i am repeating when we analyze the complexity functions of different algorithms we must so we want to check uh, the complexity of these algorithms for higher values of an input and an a function that grows slower for higher inputs is desirable than a function that grows much faster so this function grows very slow because for a particular input the output will be very less and for 35 it will be having maximum of 1000 or uh, 1100 complexity but if we analyze the complexity for 35 for these these functions they will be giving value in thousands so this is called the growth of the functions and one more point when we analyze the complexity of these functions we see that for so smaller inputs the impact of these constants 100 and 100 they have some impact for but after the break even point the impact of these constant is neutralized and we see that the actual growth of these functions comes to uh, picture so we have to neglect these constants while analyzing growth of these functions and we have to mainly focus on these in uh, values which are directly dependent on the input hope you understand uh, these topics let us move back to our slides so after analyzing these two algorithms uh, in the spreadsheet as well as after going through their graphs we came to the conclusion that b algo is better than a algo means bisma's algorithm is better than abdullah's algorithm the complexity of b algo is lesser than complexity of a algorithm so a algorithm grows faster for higher values of input as compared to a algorithm which grows very slower and is having a linear complexity so bisma scores over abdullah in this comparison so that is all in this uh, first part of this asymptotic video see you soon in part two of this video